The first question presents us with two different buckets. One is a large bucket with five gallon capacity, which equates to 19 liters of liquid. So we can set this up as a five, we put gallons over liters, five to 19. And then I'm wondering how many liters are in two gallons. I could switch this up as well and put it liters over gallons, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is I have a consistency on which values, that the values, the same types of values are on the same level of the proportional method. Then I could go ahead and if I want to cross multiply, well, instead of a question mark, I'll put an X. So I have a 5X equaling 38, so that when I divide both sides by 5, x equals, uh, should be 7 and 3 fifths, which is 7.6. 7.6 liters is how much would be in 2 gallons, okay? You could also use just equivalent fractions. 2 times what gives me 5. So if I take 5 and I divide it by 2, I get 2 and a half. That means I take 19 and I um, divide it by two and a half, 19 divided by two and a half, and I also get 7.6. So if you want to just be working straight across, you just find out how much did one get adjusted by either multiplication or division to get to the other value, and you repeat that same proportion on the bottom half of the ratio. So during a sale, every item in a store is 80% of its original value, and this is important, it's of, not off, its original value. So if the regular price of a t-shirt is $12, what is the sale price? Well, that means that we are trying to find 80% of some original value. And we know based on our practice with percents is the amount is the percent times the base. So if I have 80%, that's 0.8, of means multiplication of 12 equals 9.6. So the sale price is going to be $9.60. Um, if we had taken, if we'd taken that it was, so obviously it was a 20% discount, which meant we saved $2.40. Uh, is that $2.40? Yes, uh, we saved $2.40 off of the original price to get us here, but that was only accounting for 20%, the price we didn't pay, and this is telling us the price we do pay. Uh, so then if we look at question number three, which one of these methods or which one of these expressions is correctly modeling this situation? Well, the first one was 80 or 8 one hundredths times X. Well, 8 out of 100 means 8% out of 100, which is way too small. That would be 0.08 instead of 0.8. So that one doesn't work. If we have 80 one hundredths times x, this works because if it's 80 out of 100, it is 80% of x's value. So this would be acceptable. 8 tenths, if I needed to make this out of a base 10 fraction where it's out of 100, if I multiplied that by 10, multiply that by 10, that would also give me 80 out of 100, which we've already established is correct. I could also divide or even just convert this to its decimal equivalent. 8 tenths is 0.8, which as a decimal is 80%. 4 over 10 converts to 0.4, which as a percent would only be 40, which is half of the desired value that we're working with. So that's not going to work. Oh, this one did. That did not. Uh, if we have 4 fifths times x, well, we need to get the decimal equivalent. If I have 4, I divide it by 5. That gives me 0.8. If I wanted to make this more familiar to me, I could have multiplied it by 2 or even 20 to have gotten 8 tenths, which we've already established is the correct percentage value or correct fractional representation of 80%. So this works. 4 fifths is good. Um, 80 times 
x. This is not good. This is way too large. This is a whole number. This would be saying 8,000%. 8,000%. You would be multiplying the cost of the shirt 12 by 80, which means that shirt would now cost you $960, which is way more than I'd ever want to spend on a shirt. And then the final one is 0 0.8 times x. While this is messy, it still solves accurately because I have a 0.8, 80% being multiplied by some larger value. So this is acceptable. That earlier one is not. So you have a total of four correct values. Hence the reason it's four points. Question number four says, uh, Jasmina is looking at two different candy bracelets. One of those candy bracelets has a diameter of eight. The other one has a diameter of four. And she believes that if she just buys two of the smaller bracelets, it's going to be give her the same amount of candy as buying one larger bracelet, one eight diameter uh, bracelet. Is she correct or not? Well, we got to prove it. So we know our formula for circumference because we want to know the total distance around the circle to account for how much candy we have is um, two pi r or pi d. They were kind enough to give us d, which means we're just multiplying that value by 3.14. If I take the 3.14 and I multiply it by a diameter of 4, let me get my calculator real quick. I had it ready to go, but went to sleep. So 3.14 times 4 is going to give us, so for a uh, I 4, that is 3.14 times 4 is going to give us 12.56 inches of candy for the small bracelet. So if I end up buying two of those, I'm going to double this, which is going to give me 25.12 inches of candy if I buy two of the smaller bracelets. Well, let's see how that compares to the larger diameter uh, candy bracelet. So if we have pi d and pi is 3.14 and a, the diameter of our larger bracelet is 8, when I multiply those two together, I get 25.12. So they are equivalent because it's just a one-dimensional length. It's asking me to go ahead and just double the original value. Um, it, with the just doubling the diameter, so you're doubling the quantity, it all works out. So yes, Jasmina is correct. Two little bracelets is equivalent to one larger bracelet. And you could show mathematically to prove the, the why it is or isn't. The pizza, though, for the last question, things get more complicated when you have a square in your formula because you have exponential growth. Something is not only being added to itself, it's being multiplied by itself, which creates much more tremendous growth. So uh, Jasmina now says that a large pizza has a diameter of 12 and a small pizza has a diameter of 6. And she believes if she buys three small pizzas, it's going to be the same amount of pizza as buying one large one. Well, we're not worrying about the outside of the pizza. We want to know the actual inside, the quantity. So we need the area. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, if the large pizza has a diameter of 12, that means to find its radius, we have to cut that in half. So divide by 2 to get 6. So radius equals 6 here. So if we go radius of 6 and we square it and we have pi. 6 squared means 6 times 6, which gives us 36 times pi's value. The small pizza had a diameter of 6 that if we cut in half, we then get 3. So our radius is 3. So same formula, if we take our radius and square it, then add, uh, multiply it by pi, 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9 pi. If I look at the pre proportion of this, 36 is four times as large as 9. So that means the area of my large pizza is four times as large as the area of my small pizza. I don't even need to officially calculate that. I'm just looking for this baseline proportion because they both have pi involved. 
So Jasmina is incorrect. She would need to buy four small pizzas in order to have the same amount as one large pizza.